of Mr. Bennett, one of the survivors of Portland Square. Okay, now, what would you want me to say? Just start talking about it when you went in the aid shelter behind your friend. You're the aid siren go, or whatever, you went to the aid shelter. Yeah. I was about 16, and we were um, really, well, I suppose, known as the James Street Gang, um, based upon Stanley Will's house at 6 James Street. And uh, we used to congregate there, for example, on a Sunday afternoon and go to the pictures together. And, um, involved in the air raids, of course, we all were. Uh, mostly Stan, myself, and Gordon Furno, I think he was called. Sometimes Trelawney Cullum from yep. Park Crescent. But it was our wont to um, have a good time, really, I suppose, by playing ukuleles, singing songs and such things, and head towards the shelter most nights. And in the night in question, of course, we did the usual thing in a single fall, going along. I was singing something, I don't know what it was. Won't sit under the apple tree or something, something like that. And I think she was called Sylvia Birch, living in Armada Street, as I remember. Um, was head of the column, and at the, I think it's the north side, isn't it, of the Portland Square, um, headed the, the file down through the steps, as is usual, and as normally we would do, to go to the left, that's the top uh, section of the shelter, um, and me sort of, all in fun as you do, shout out like a sergeant major, you know, left wheel, and of course she turned around over her shoulder and cocked a snoot and, and went to the right. And in about, what, to the right, about uh, 12, 15 feet inside, we all sat there, and me nearest the entrance, and Sylvia and Stan, I can't remember who else was there, um, a bit further in. Um, and passing time, as of course we always did. But this particular night, um, sudden shock, of course, when the actual bomb fell on the shelter, and we heard, we heard nothing, really, uh, as regards to bangs. All there was was a <laughs> air rushing past us and of course we all stopped in amazement and wondered what it was and um, uh, actually there was nothing no, no stones no, no no rubble nothing like that although i'll call her sylvia i think she was called sylvia and she oh and reached down for her stockings and apparently the air through some blast affected torn her stockings and that was the only thing that we we had drawn with us at all and about, uh, I think about five, six, seven, eight feet perhaps on the other side of the entrance, the, ring, the wing where we would have gone, um, there was just the end of the crater of the rubble down there and people were dashing around obviously, excitedly, uh, air raid wardens and such. Um, and uh, we, we sort of, uh, uh, after it calmed down a bit, we had to try, try to head out to the shelter again and see what we could do to help, but of course being young people, 16, 17, we were, we were um, told, oh no, you, will you sit back and wait. And a little later on I noticed that they were, we were, they were on top of the grass part there, they were laying out sheet-covered bodies, I didn't know how many were, of course we know it was a tragedy, but in our youth we were not so disaster-struck as perhaps I would have been these days. Have you know to me about Garden Crescent? Garden Crescent? You me. lived in the house that yeah. had the escape hatch under it, didn't you? Yes, yes. Um, 21 Garden Crescent, I think it's a guest house or something Sorry. now. 21 Garden Crescent, um, before, I think the one next door was destroyed later on, but uh, um, at least one, two of them, I think it was, was destroyed. But uh, did they come one day to I, make the escape hatch? I don't remember. I don't remember that. I don't remember but that. But you remember oh, the know. escape hatch? Yes. Was I, it I, like? I, I, I know. Yes. It was, oh yes, it was, it was like a top of a train, really. Mm -hmm. And you open the drain up, which you left open very often, in fact, usually. Usually left open? Oh, yes, and to let the air circulate. What stopped you falling down the hill? The, the, well, it was propped up halfway up, sort of thing, you know. Uh, and yeah. It wasn't completely up. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember whether it was lifted off or, or hinged up, I can't remember that. All right. But directly inside was, of course, this iron ladder, like this in the shutter there, like that yeah. one, but close to the wall, fastened to the wall. Yeah. And, of course, as young people, we were used this sometimes, a bit of fun. Mm, difficult question. Mm. Was the exit underground, square or circular? Yeah. I won't be sure. I, I think I think circular, I can't remember. It is that. circular. Yes, yes it is. It's an interesting white circular. I'd love to know. And what happened when you went down the bottom? Down the bottom? Did you then... came to an L-shaped yes, corner. Absolutely right. And then went in towards the grassy park under the... No, so, sorry, when you went down the iron ladder, yes. got to the bottom of the ladder, mm -hmm. 
Could you walk into the air no, shelter? Not walking. But did you have to go down again yeah. under? It was like a drain pipe. A big drain pipe. pipe. That is exactly yeah. the same these days. Yeah, big drain We'd pipe. like to know why is it built in such a complicated fashion? <laughs> I think they'll come up for air. Circulation only, that's all. The only one like it in the city. Is it really? Yeah. Oh. But uh, well, in, in the evenings. Um, but you can't remember it being built? No. So it was there one day? I don't know. I, I mean, after all, memory is a funny thing. I understand that, yeah. Some things you remember, some things you don't. Right. And but that, you didn't, of course. You that, when there was a raid, that wasn't the entrance oh, in. No. no, directly opposite our house there was some uh, the limestone parts. Yes, yes. And there were little, little steps down. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. In fact, on top of those steps, one night I was watching a very interesting dogfight over the sound. I mean, it was very interesting indeed. One came down out in the country somewhere. But it was my uh, usual thing to get some sleep by where the tunnel went into the shelter. And there was obviously a circular hole. Circular, you weren't circular hole. And I would get a blanket or something and crawl up in that and have some sleep. Um, and the, the you slept in that passageway. Oh, yeah. That was good, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Not always, yeah, of course, when, yes, and it depends what, what sort of way it was on then, but yes, it's quite true. And I was there dozing down, getting down, and I think half awake and half asleep, when what we all called an oil bomb fell in the, the front of our house, but down to the right of the dock entrance, and looking at my back gate. Um, and uh, I then came out, they say, like a bullet from a gun, out of this round uh, uh, tunnel into the shelter. Partly because the blast blew down, because the thing was set open. And partly because I was suddenly taken half awake and half asleep by, suddenly be rudely awakened. So you were blasted into the shelter? Yeah. I can't say like a gun, like a bullet really, but that sort of thing. No, similar thing, thing isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. So you were blasted uh, into the area yes. shelter? Yes, yeah, that's right. Head first or feet first? No, feet first, feet running first, yeah. I mean, I, I probably just slid over the side and, and, and came down, but it was as though I was told I'd been blasted through the thing. Do you have any other memories of Gordon Crescent? No. Well, yeah. only, only watching the air raid, shelter, um, air raid fights. No, we know um, from our records that in that park are two other air raid shelters. One yes. called Eddie Stone Terrace, Terrace and the other Radford Avenue. Yeah, that's the other Do you have any me no. memories of those? No, no in fact, I, I say I, that, that was... An earlier part of the war, really, for me, because um, we then moved up to the Stoke area, remember, in the Grove, which uh, had an incendiary bomb, actually. Now, what shelter did you use at the Cook? You had your own, you said, didn't you? There's a specially built one. We rented a house at 17 the Grove, which would have been burned down, except we got up there and put the incendiary out, yeah. Um, but uh, what else do you want to know about that? Mark? Just anything, a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, you might have said you went into the, the area to shelter at the youth hostel, Belmont House. On no, the hill never road. went there. Never. In fact, you see, uh, while I was living in the Grove, um, uh, we, we were all ganging up in town. Right. Uh, we were often, after sh we weren't allowed to wander in the air raids themselves usually, but we would, uh, several of us, three or four, Gordy, I think, and Stan, we would help with anything we could in the evacuation of goods right. from shops and things. Would you recall uh, the air crash at Penley? Uh, only the fact it was there. And it's where was it? Could you say? Yes. Everyone knows I'm having this. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> I believe at the end of Nelson Gardens. The end of Nelson. Uh, not Gardens. Nelson Gardens. Are they called Nelson Gardens? Uh, Penley Gardens. Penley Gardens. Yes. Which end? The father's from Motorworth Road. The yes, that's interesting. That ties up with someone else. The people we've interviewed, everyone admits to having it in their house. Yes. If someone must be right. In but, their house. Well, right. in the front of their house. Oh, oh outside our house. house. Outside our house. A very vague memory. Um, it makes me sort of but at the end of Penley Gardens, yes. it's the same with a lot of people. I thought it was over a gate, actually. Was gate, that yes, that's right. Yes. I mean, I seem to remember looking over a gate or something, but it's all pretty well, that vague. that does fit very, very well. But a lot of our fun was in going... Fun, it's, it's called it fun, but it was fun to young people, really. Um, was in our escapades after the race, really. Um, I remember, I was just with Stan, I believe, then. Well, I'm just standing on. Sorry, okay. Mitch was working, yes. Yeah, yeah. alright. And I remember we walked down... You all right? But it's not going at all, is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, good. Okay. I can't remember the actual name of the lane, which goes down behind, which I think is now Western Approach, from Coburg Street down the street to Russell Street, down that direction. And we're walking down uh, that lane towards where I, I was working my first job at Eric Summers in Russell Street. Russell Street? That was it called? Yeah, that's right. Yes, right yeah. And uh, as you walk down, behind, I remember it was Good Body's Bakery, I believe, there. Pretty sure it was. And as we walked by, a great big tall 
as I remember, 15 feet, 20 feet high, perhaps a brick wall, suddenly move right behind this, you know, and collapse of good years, startled like hell. And I went down towards Russell Street, and I realized that my place where I work was burning down. And my boss, Eric Summers, said, it's all gone, Bernard, or I think Jack, whatever they called me then. Um, and he says, looks like you'll be in the labor exchange tomorrow, which I was, um, looking for another job, which I got right away with Underwood typewriters in uh, Westwood Gardens. Um, but we got down there, and there, there were a lot of, of course, there's fire everywhere, as, as goes without saying. And there was someone trying to uh, evacuate goods from Pengelis, the tobacconist, as a uh, uh, well-known in Plymouth, tobacconist. And we were, we went in, I remember, so I say it's all treated casually. I remember saying, have you got uh, 20 tenors, please, you know? And uh, 20 cigarettes, please, whatever it was. And I was slung a carton, up yourself, something like this, you know? And we were all shoving things in boxes and that. And uh, shoving out the road. And someone said, you wash out the stairs, they're going, no, let's look out. So we, we all got out quick as we could, but my mate Stan, being Stan, he uh, was left behind there. I think he was upstairs showing something down, or trying to find something, I don't know what. And we were saying, Stan, come on out, come on out, Stan, you know. And uh, he came out with a great big long church board and pipe in his mouth, and laughing away, of course. And directly he came out the door, clunk, and I thought, well, here we are, in narrow escapes, you know, we don't, he mostly had the narrow escape there. And then, so you I carry on or not? Yes, I want to ask you a specific question. Uh, when you heard the air raid siren go, air raid sirens go, go, where were they, as far as you're aware? What, the sirens? Where were they located? All over the place, then. You, you couldn't be know. specific? No, no, no. You couldn't say, ah, it's like saying, where's near crossroads? Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. say, ah, that's the one on top of the church. That oh, was no. the one in... Oh, no, nothing like that. Right. Oh, you would never know. You never think about it, even. Can I just stop you a minute, yeah. eh? OK. Whoops, sorry. Whoops. No question of looting. I never saw any looting, from my own point of view. Um, but when we emptied this... Back in the, we were young smokers, of course, and they slung a packet of, I suppose, a carton, of the carton of uh, 200 tenors, the old cigarettes, the tenors, cheap, cheap yes. ones out there, and we had those, and uh, we then walked up towards James Street, and we were walking around, somewhere around Fortnum Square area, somewhere around there, and a foreign sailor or so, or, or something, that was probably Polish, but of a laugh, came towards us and said, you wouldn't have any cigarettes, something like this, and we'll stand there, so got a few packs of fags and slung at him, you know. Oh, he said, and he gave us a half bottle of whiskey, I think, or something else, <laughs> quarter bottle, I don't know what. And I remember seeing, I think it was in Gordy Fernald's house, somewhere in the garden, we, we stopped this whiskey, and uh, that was the end of a, a really good night. But um, did you want me to talk about uh, Pennycombe Quicks that night? I suppose? Yeah. 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 Well, me living in, in the Grove up in Stoke, and being part of the James Street gang, as it were, uh, when everything was quiet and done afterwards, I would have to walk home, obviously. And uh, I think this particular night was the night when we went in Dingle's store in Coburg Street, opposite the school here, um, next to the Harvest Home, near the Harvest Home, I remember. And we were helping to carry out boxes of food. And uh, the thing that said there very clearly in my mind, we were carrying these crates out the front of, front of the shop. And there was butter melted everywhere. We were sliding around with the boxes, you know, like uh, on ice rink, you know. That's in there. After that, I think it was the same night when I walked home and everything was quiet. And I walked along Coburg Street as it was then, down to, uh, past the station, under the bridge, Saltash Bridge, at Rothwell Station. And as I was under the bridge there, whoosh, 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 hundreds and hundreds of incendiaries. And there was no planes there. Nothing came, I think it was all clear at the time, in fact, sure it was. And all of these things came everywhere. And, oh, God, here we go. And there were obviously bags of sands lying everywhere for the purpose. So we were there, and one or two people there as well, they were dumping bags on top of the, to stop the light being shown up in the sky, obviously, stop the glare, and stop any fire starting. And um, we got most of the main ones in the street out, and I remember I had some decent clothes on, and I tore them a bit, trying to get to one behind what I think is now a post office uh, vehicle, yeah. get, it's, um, car park or something there, somewhere around there. It was rough ground, I know, at the time. And then I noticed one was inside, there was, um, was then the Luxie cab office, a big glass door, I saw something burning inside, so we made some effort across um, the other side of the road, um, some trade union place there, I think, we're, and we were looking for someone to open the place, and we couldn't, so Ben had made a big decision to put his foot through the glass, it was a lovely experience, <laughs> and pulling it out, and either that or some other night, it was the night I walked up uh, Multiverse Road towards um, my home, and I heard 
um, a great big alarm, smoke and fire and people shouting and that and I think uh, fire engines, I can't remember exactly, but oh, I thought, I thought get near, it's my house, it's my house. And it wasn't, of course, luckily. <laughs> but the, the, my house did have a, did have a incendiary, which we managed to put out. It was not very much damage to the roof. Um, that's about the lot, I think. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, um, the walk home afterwards, I said, we're going to quick. But uh, I remember walking down through, I can't remember the name of the street now, um, what's it called? Uh, the Western Evening Herald Street, whatever, whatever uh, it was George called. Street, then. George Street. Street yeah. I remember walking down there um, after a raid, and there was no fire engines around, nothing like that. There were obviously too many fires. But just walking down the through, and if you can imagine tall buildings, shops, each side, uh, all in flame for a great long area. I mean, I, I should think up to 100 yards or more. Just walk in the middle of the street because you couldn't walk either side, obviously. Flames both sides and think to yourself, oh, this must be the end of everything. Everything's finished, you know. But in effect, of course, you can be, you become, even at that age, you get a bit rational. You think, oh, no, it's, it'll all be all right. It'll, it'll burn out. It'll be okay, you know. But uh, the feeling of, well, it's, you've seen the films with fire effects of uh, people driving through fire and that. And that's the feeling I had just then, walking through wall of fire each side. Yeah.